Yes, guys, welcome back to Flat Cap Euro Talk, and I am very excited about this one. We are going to be doing a scout report on Charles de Quetelera, one of my favorite kind of just young players that are coming out. I think he's sensationally one for the future. Sincerely, I will say I've seen Matt. I've actually genuinely seen him since like 2019, something like that. You know, it's been a, like a, a, for some reason, I've just caught like a few games of his whenever he's been on like any of the big European stages. I really like Charles de Catalera. So I figured, you know, when we're kind of talking about maybe you know, uh, our, our ideal transfer windows, right? I honestly think like Charles de Catalera would be sort of my ideal backup striker to Harry Kane because everybody wants, you know, a quality backup striker to Harry Kane, uh, but one that obviously might have to maybe sacrifice some minutes to him uh, when we maybe can't do two strikers. And we probably want to look for someone that maybe can play across that forward line. And to be fair, I think Charles de Catalera kind of fits that, uh, fits that mold but everybody do let me know what you think so far uh let's break it down uh but this is my charles de Catalera kind of breakdown uh born in uh bruges belgium of course uh by the way everybody as well um sorry let me get this back up here uh born in uh bruges belgium or bruga belgium uh 21 years old two, born in 2001 can play as kind of anywhere I, I i honestly think he can play basically anywhere i've seen him play basically anywhere in that kind of forward area he can play as a cam can play as a striker you know alone or alongside you know someone else he can play as a left winger can play as a right winger he's left footed he's extremely tall six feet three inches 27 million pounds i mean it wasn't a lot less uh <laughs> i mean before that uh, but it seems like maybe he's catching a bit of wind now that it's the end of the season his contract is up in 2024 but those are kind of, you know, his basic info, but let's look at the stats, all these stats in terms of the percentiles and everything, everybody are actually comparing him to all forwards from his champions league campaign this season. So when he was in the champions league, he played about six games, as you can tell, only zero goals and one assist, but he still was re uh, measuring. He still was kind of getting some pretty unbelievable per 90 stats there. Of course, in the Jupiler league or the Belgian league, he had 33 matches played 14 goals and six assists pretty decent tally there uh, for uh, a guy his age uh, key passes completed he was in the top fourth percentile of all forwards in the champions league uh, basically so you know in europe's top five leagues combined uh, that was basically from the stats he was earning there of course it's a very small sample size so you kind of have to take it with a pinch of salt you know to a degree but I don't really know, like uh, he still is recording some pretty spectacular creative numbers for a team that, of course, was getting kind of bullied, right, you know, in that really, really tough group. And he was still getting spectacular numbers, uh, passes into penalty area, 1.81 per 90, puts him in the top second percentile uh, of any player uh, of any forward in the uh, Europe's top five leagues, progressive passes in the top fifth percentile. Uh, shot creating actions, which is where he's still like for a team, right? That wasn't registering a lot of goals, wasn't, wasn't registering a lot of chances, still creating nearly three chances a game. So that put him in the top 20th percentile there. Uh, pressures, uh, uh, he's in the top six. So maybe he does work actually a lot harder than honestly I've seen him work, but perhaps that just had to do with the fact that, you know, they were again, you know, kind of the underdogs and all the games he was playing in. Uh, long passes completed almost three a game as well uh, with uh, uh, in the top seventh percentile there. Clearly a very creative forward. And I'll go as far as to say this, everybody, and then we'll kind of sit back, maybe watch the highlight reel and enjoy it. I feel like Sh Charles de Catelier, the reason I would go for him is you can't really replace Kane, but maybe you could consider developing a player that could play somewhat similarly to him and be a similar sort of focal player in our attack kind of like Kane has been. And I do feel like Charles de Catalera could be good enough to be that sort of guy. He kind of plays like a Kai Havertz where he's, you know, extremely tall, but really good with his feet, really creative. Uh, but what I think compared to Kai Havertz is that maybe he has a bit more of that finishing edge and perhaps can just play across the forward line even more effectively than Havertz does. Uh, but that's what I kind of see him being as someone that could perhaps replace you know some of the elements that Kane brings to us in the way that he drops deep the way they links up play being creative being so technical I could see uh Charles de Catalera uh being that guy for us but do let me know what uh what you guys think of that but let's uh break it down everybody here with the Charles de Catalera uh highlight reel and honestly I haven't seen this before I'm really looking forward to it to be fair the competition I'm imagining is not going to be too too tough but it's still going to be absolute sauce at times 
And also what I do love is that he's six foot four or something like that. And then he's alongside Vanakin, who's also just absolutely massive as well. It is just pretty hilarious, to be fair. Just huge, technically gifted, uh, tall players that are just uh, so good on their feet. It is quite funny. And already we're just seeing the absolute grossness. I mean, look at that passing behind there with the, the outside of the foot. Oh, it's just beautiful as well there. I think that if you, you know, bear in mind what I've been saying about potential, you know, Kane replacement for years to come, you know, like, you know, way down the road, you know, Kane replacement. I mean, you know, you have to consider it sometimes with the way, you know, he likes to play the game. You can kind of see it. Apparently, as well, he was a huge tennis star at one stage as, uh, as well. as so he's kind of a multi-gifted athlete. Uh, he's just kind of so graceful. That, I remember watching that game against PSG. That was unbelievable uh, had they been able to put that away. But you can see the silky skills there. He kind of runs a bit like Kulu. Maybe the more you know he gets going, maybe the faster he is. Uh, needs a, you know, a bit of momentum, but showing a bit of strength here as well, which is nice to see. And maybe that pressure that we were talking about. Look at that sensational touch there and look at that pass as well that was against rb leipzig yeah it just has such beautiful feet They're showing a lot of moments of him kind of getting stuck in at stages. So maybe those kind of stats of him, you know, actually having a lot of pressures. And to be fair, his tackles and interception numbers were higher than I expected. Maybe he does actually get stuck in more. And so that could be another thing that could be useful to us if we were to go after him. Maybe that's why he could be effective across the forward line, because with Tequetalera, he can, you know, maybe work hard, you know, as a left winger, as a right winger. Or even if we played some sort of formation with like a cam, maybe Sonny, Tequetalera, and uh, Kane. And maybe Tequetalera plays sort of behind them, works very hard, uh, and then is able to also play alongside them. Look at these dimes that he's playing as well. I mean, he also is very similar, of course, to Kulu. Uh, Kulu, I would say, a bit more powerful, a bit more kind of stronger than uh, the likes of a, a Tequetalera. Uh, of a uh, Decatalera, but at the same time, like they, they have similar technical gifts and qualities where they're just so smart, so composed, just so clever, and just, you know, make the game look really easy at times as well. And I do love how much I'm seeing him getting stuck in. It really is spectacular. And you can see his tight feet in all these moments, and he really does play these times. And I really do see him as a sort of cane of the future. And I know that's like such a ridiculous thing to say, but that's how high I rate him. And to be fair, you can kind of see some of his attributes uh, of Kane kind of, you know, comparing kind of well. And maybe the more that he grows, the more that he, you know, get, uh, gets used to his body as well as, you know, better competition, of course. Uh, maybe he could be someone that plays somewhat similar to Kane in the future. I'm not saying he'll be nearly as good as Kane, uh, but maybe he'll play uh, very similar to him because there are really no players in world football that play that similar to Kane. And I could see Tequetelaire maybe being that one. Wow, some of this footage is really just it's almost Sunday league-ish in the Jupiler League. <clears throat> that looks like against Dinamo Kiev. That was against Zenit there. Against Dortmund, this must have been... They, were they, they didn't go down to the Europa League, so I wonder when that was taken. But, I mean, as you can see, everybody, the, the ball-carrying ability, the technical ability, the way that he can strike a ball, uh, you know, the way that he links up play, the creative stuff, it's all pretty insane, to be honest. He's probably more of a... He's probably more of a creative even number nine than he is like a goal-scoring number nine, but does have 14 goals this season, to be honest, and I'm not sure if he takes the penalties. I'm pretty sure someone else takes the penalties. Might even be Vinokin or someone else that takes the penalties for them. So I do really like, uh, you know, 
to Catalera. And I do kind of see the fact that he's so tall, you know, it could also help, you know, the fact that Havertz is really tall can kind of get him, you know, kind of sometimes that edge. I feel like in certain moments when he gets a lot of headers, you know, finds himself, you know, bullying players, he, despite not being super strong, just because he's so tall and lanky, he doesn't, you know, get as bullied as much. Uh, so I could see to uh, to Catalera being very similar. So yeah, if I were to even, you know, be optimistic about him, I say right now in this moment in time, very similar player to someone like a Kai Havertz, who I would say I really do rate. Uh, and I think, you know, is obviously a very technically gifted player like a Kulu uh, that, you know, we'd always take more of, to be fair. And then I in the future, I could see him being, you know, really, really similar to someone like a Harry Kane in the way that he plays, because the way he loves to link up play, the way that he clearly likes to drop deep uh, and, and also kind of be more of a creative kind of force, you know, for his team instead of being just, you know, a number nine uh and just that only he likes to you know do other things but clearly uh in some of these games he's not playing as like a number nine he's obviously playing as kind of like a cam or you know playing as some sort of number 10 position alongside a number uh you know an actual number nine uh i never have seen him sort of play by himself uh as a number nine but you know at the at the end of the day uh when it comes to to Catalera, I really do like his game, and I think he's probably kind of uh, my dream signing, uh, everybody. But do let me know what you think of him. Is he kind of that sort of, you know, striker that Spurs should go after this summer? I, I'm well aware that, you know, it's not realistic. You know, Conte is probably not someone that really wants to go after him. There were a few moments when I did see links uh, over kind of the, the regular season uh, with him. That really did delight me. I don't really see it happening now that we've gotten top four. Uh, but to be fair, I actually see him as kind of like a very, very smart, you know, backup striker signing that a lot of people would actually be kind of happy with. But do let me know what you think of him. Everybody in the comments below, as always, hit that like button on your way out and I will be seeing you.